Hi everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. We are continuing our second unit on cell structure and function with topic two, cell structure and function. Today, what we are talking about is a, a little bit more, more detail into the structure of a, per, some particular organelles and how that serves their function. So one of the major themes in all of biology is that form meets function and each subcellular component of the cell structure contributes to serving its function. So this is pretty common among every single biological topic that there is. Um, things are formed in such a way that helps them accomplish their function. Um, and that's something that we're going to be looking at in today in more detail uh, with regards to two particular organelles or subcellular components. Uh, but just as a recap here, there's a few things I wanted to point, point out uh, that we talked about in our last video in 2.1. Um, lysosomes, what their job is, if you don't remember, is to d digest and break down macromolecules that could serve as waste or they could serve or you know, just for hydrolysis of larger uh, components. And it also helps in cell or programmed cell death called apoptosis. Um, so it helps to digest those things. Um, and the lysosome is built in such a way that it is surrounded by a membrane that contains these enzymes. It helps it do its job. Vacuoles are surrounded by a membrane, um, and their job is to store molecules and waste products, and particularly in plants, water to provide that turgor pressure that we talked about in the last video. Um, and finally, the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, um, its system of membranes and its smooth part and its rough part, um, the fact that it's embedded with ribosomes, particularly the rough part, um, is formed in such a way that allows it to carry out its functions, which includes synthesizing proteins through those ribosomes and labeling them as glycoproteins to move around within the cell, building a vesicle for them, and as well as lipids in the, the smooth ER, and so that it can transport them. And in addition, um, because the endoplasmic reticulum can be so extensive, it provides mechanical support uh, for the cell. So one of the main ideas of all bio, as I'm pointing out here, is that whatever something's function is, its structure or its form allows that to allows that to serve its function. All right. So uh, the two main organelles that we're going to get into today in the structure and function of each are the mitochondria and the chloroplast. And the reason why we're getting into those two is because in our third unit, uh, we are discussing more extensively um, the processes that go on within these cells, or excuse me, within these organelles because they're key components of metabolism, so as cellular respiration and photosynthesis. We're going to talk about that a lot. Um, so, as we know, mitochondria is the polar host of the cell. It carries out metabolic reactions, and most notably, ATP synthesis. And ATP, a cell cannot function without ATP. Life cannot function without ATP. Um, and different reactions, uh, different metabolic reactions, take place in different compartments of the mitochondria. Um, if you remember from the last video, I believe I might have said this, but a mitochondria has a double membrane. So it has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. So if we take a look at this uh, diagram here, we have an outer, I kind of tried to color code it a little bit. Uh, so the outer membrane is this kind of tan structure here. Um, the intermembrane space, it's darker brown. It's in between the outer membrane and this yellow component, which is the inner membrane. Uh, and inside the inner membrane is what we call the mitochondrial matrix, or just the matrix in this case. Um, and then the last thing I want to point out here is that this membrane, this inner membrane, is very convoluted. It's got lots of folds, and it's kind of smushed together within the mitochondria. And those folds are called Christi. Christi. I think Christa. No. I don't remember what this sin the singular is, but Christi is the term for these folds in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, and folds in a membrane provide for better surface area, which is a topic that we'll get into, into in the next topic, uh, which is 2.3. We'll talk about that quite a bit. Um, another thing to note um, for later on is that mitochondria have their own DNA and they have their own ribosomes. Um, so their cellular origin is something that is... Um, explained by what we call endosymbiosis, which is actually topic 2.11. Um, so here's the couple things about wh how this mitochondria is compartmentalized. Uh, so aerobic cellular respiration occurs within the mitochondria. So 
there's anaerobic respiration and there's aerobic respiration. Anaerobes like yeast and bacteria that don't have these mitochondria are not able to accomplish um, all these other steps of making ATP. And cellular respiration, again, a topic that we're going to get into a lot, it's basically the production of ATP, right? Um, so there's three steps to it. There's one that occurs outside of the mitoc mitochondrion that the bacteria and yeast and other single-celled organisms, prokaryotes, are um, able to do, and that's called ferment or it's called glycolysis, I should say. Um, but these other two steps, along with ATP synthesis, occur within the mitochondrion. So it's not this step after the uh, um, glycolysis, which occurs outside of the mitochondrion, occurs within the matrix, and it's called the Krebs or the citric acid cycle. And the citric acid cycle, once that produces the the products that it needs to, um, start it powers what we call the electron transport chain, and it's also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Um, and that occurs along the inter the inner membrane, excuse me, the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. All right, so there are proteins that line along this membrane here, and a lot line along the cristae. They're called cytochromes. And what they're able to do is pass an electron from one place to the next, to the next, and allow for ATP synthesis to occur. So this is actually where your body is able to produce ATP is along the inner membrane of the mitochondria. All right, so let's keep going here. The other main organelle that we're going to be talking about is the chloroplast, and they have a lot in common with mitochondrion. Uh, chloroplasts also have inner membrane systems, so they have a double membrane, like, much like the mitochondrion, um, and they also have different sets of reactions that take in parts in different places within that organelle, leading once again to the idea that, you know, chloroplasts and mitochondrion used to be their own organisms. Um, so that has to do with the uh, evolution of eukaryotes. Um, but yeah, a few things that they have in common. Let's take a look at this diagram that I made of, uh, of the chloroplasts. Um, so once again, we have an outer membrane, so in this, this darker green, I couldn't really I couldn't really color code it this time since it's all like the same color. Uh, the inner membrane sits right below it. Okay, there's no folds in that inner membrane uh, like in the mitochondrion. Um, but what's important to note are these other three structures within the inner membrane. Uh, you have stat these kind of like po poker chip shaped uh, structures. They're called thylakoids. Thylakoids over here, um, and a stack of these thylakoids. That's what we call a granum. So there's, uh, the chloroplast has multiple grana, which are these stacks of thylakoids within, its, uh, within the inner membrane. And the fluid outside of the grana, uh, but within the inner membrane, it is called the stroma. It's kind of like this fluid jelly-like substance, and it contains particular compounds that allow the chloroplast to do its photosynthesis job. All right, so thylakoids, granum, and stroma are going to be uh, pretty important. Um, and here's why. Uh, when we get into photosynthesis in our third unit, we're going to be talking about the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis, the ones that um, must be done in the presence of some kind of some kind of light energy. Um, those occur within the grana, okay? So those all happen along the uh, thylakoid membranes. And the thylakoid membranes contain you may have heard of this compound, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is for the light-absorbing pigment. It's, you know, it reflects green light. That's why it's green. Um, and the, what we call the photosystem protein. So again, when we get into this in unit three, we're going to talk about photosystem one and photosystem two and the roles that they play um, in producing um, NADPH, which is going to, oh, we'll talk about it later, okay? Uh, but the light dependent reactions, what you need to know today is that those reactions that occur within light or with light um, happen in these thylakoids and along these grana, but the what we call dark reactions or what we call the light independent reactions that take carbon dioxide in the products from the light dependent reactions and are able to produce those six carbon glucose molecules. That's called the Calvin cycle. That occurs within the stroma. So that's still within the inner membrane of the chloroplast, but it's outside the thylakoids and outside the grana. Okay, so light dependence and the thylakoid membranes and the dark reactions occur within the stroma outside of the thylakoids. Okay, um, that'll be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to get into cell size and why that matters and do a little math. Don't you love math? All right, we'll see you next time. Let me know if you have any questions.